voice inside of all of us. There's a voice inside of all of us that whispers all day long, that tells us what is right for us, for us that tells us what is wrong. No teacher, preacher, parent, friend, no wise man can decide. When you think what to do, just listen to the voice that speaks inside. Yes, the voice that speaks inside was heard by all our panelists. And here we stand today with all the brilliant minds sending us their ideas, their projects, which impact the social life in a massive way, in a major way. The disruption that we always think about bringing in life, that was thought by our next generation. And here we bring together for you, right here for you, by Kaj Impact Social Innovation Pitch Contest. Let's Kaj Impact is a platform bringing together the best of impact entrepreneurs, impact investors, and mentors. This enables us to provide the ecosystem where we nurture and create impact together. I'm excited to share that this is the first premier event of Kaj Impact. We have on our panel today some of the most successful innovators, investors, executives, and chain makers. One common element that runs across each one of these speakers is they're super passionate about making a difference to a cause they care deeply about. Building a company is a very hard journey. It's not easy, irrespective of whether you're building for capitalistic opportunity or for a social impact opportunity. I think what I have realized is the three things that if we all can remember that we can take that as uh, some sort of a message to achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves. The three things that I believe is the consistency, perseverance, and self-driven. A big challenge in sanitation is building and maintaining toilets in villages because of limited resources, limited manpower and high transportation costs. But this engineer saw these problems as an opportunity to create new solutions. He set up Watsan to tackle last mile challenges in water and sanitation through technology. A decade ago, I visited more than 2,000 villages uh, across Tamil Nadu where uh, I wanted to photo document the dilapidated temples uh, wherein I found the problem of water and sanitation lacking. So this made me start Watson as the name indicates water and sanitation. For sanitation, they focus on the problem of constructing toilets without depleting river sand or a lot of water. Chandrasekharan then started looking for a better raw material. Huge amounts of fiberglass from the windmill industry are discarded, which then end up in landfills. Sadly, there are no takers for this. They upskill this waste fiberglass as building material for their toilets. Tiruturai Pundi is one village in Tamil Nadu where Wat Sands toilets have been constructed, where they trained a group of women to do so. <laughs> Chandrasekharan and his team have made it possible for the people in an area to construct toilets themselves by providing affordable molds and raw materials. But sanitation is just one pillar of public health. There are all kinds of challenges when it comes to drinking water in the country. In the Northeast, there's arsenic in the water, which causes cancer. In Rajasthan, Telangana and parts of Karnataka, there's fluoride in the water, which leads to fluorosis and bone diseases. It's not that there isn't enough water, but there isn't enough clean drinking water. To tackle this, they developed a water purifier that does not need electricity to run, and so it can be used anywhere. The filtering component is a special nano-clay candle with micropores to remove microbes, heavy metals and turbid water. 
The most important factor in making the clay candles is the selection of ingredients such as clay and sawdust. A candle goes through a 13-day cycle of mixing, soaking, drying and burning before it is taken out of the kin. The candles are then bundled and shipped to the Chennai office where it is assembled with an antibacterial cementing material into the plastic holder to fit into the filter. The purifiers are used by the border security force and during natural disasters. For their contribution to water and sanitation in India, Chandra Shekharan has won several awards. But he is not done yet. Areas. I congratulate all the participants. I see some uh, stalwarts from Bay Area, Anu uh, Jagdish and Anuji and Mr. Karnakaran from Thai Silicon Valley. So uh, happy to participate in this uh, uh, program, particularly which is always, I think, Arjuna Panda is um, moves it by contests and then prizes, etc. It's always good to encourage you know young minds. Uh, I'm sure it has not been an easy. Uh, journey to translate um, the ideas into action uh, and um, then reach to the stage. And then later on, I just heard you know, the scaling up is also uh, becomes an issue uh, in uh, uh, innovations and then startups. Uh, it's a well-deserved recognition that uh, uh, you will be accorded with uh, uh, once uh, um, uh, the, the prizes are announced and then some uh, investors from Bay Area fund that particular uh, startup and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, I, I, I wanted to uh, mention that uh, um, this event uh, comes at a time uh, when the battle against the pandemic is at very, very critical juncture. And soon we may have to start uh, an uphill battle against the uh, economic and social fallout of this pandemic. Uh, and in this battle, the role of innovation, uh, entrepreneurship and startups has been and will be very crucial. Um, we are in need of addressing new issues uh, that we are faced with and also to generate new business avenues and employment opportunities for our own people. Uh, this impact is not limited to any country um, or a region, but will have a significant influence on the trajectory of uh, global economic uh, recovery uh, itself. Um, the new and emerging element in our relationship matrix uh, is in the domain of uh, startup ecosystem. Uh, Silicon Valley is a shining example of uh, how startups can make it big on the tech and the business landscape. Uh, there are many examples uh, where an Indian startup uh, was nurtured by mentors in the Silicon Valley and eventually became a big success story. Uh, there are uh, examples where many potential tech solutions were first exposed and uh, uh, experimented uh, in India before they were expanded on global scale. Uh, recently, we heard uh, uh, about uh, the uh, fresh works, you know, which has come out. Um, Today, India has the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, uh, expected to witness uh, um, uh, an annual growth of 12 to 15 percent. There are about 55,000 active startups in India. It is all district startup units are there. Uh, and around 9,000 of these are very, uh, I think, technology-led startups. These figures have some interesting facets as well. The number of women entrepreneurs stands uh, at 14% in these startups. Uh, just now, I heard Chandra saying that 90% you know, or over 90% of uh, he, in his startup are uh, women. Uh, it has created, the, the, I believe, this uh, startup ecosystem has created around uh, uh, 165,000 new jobs in the Indian economy. Uh, Bangalore and Delhi uh, both are ranked among the world's. Uh, uh, top 40 startup cities. Uh 
Climate change is the defining problem of our generation. I was so shocked about what we as a human species are doing to our planet. I thought to myself, I shouldn't be studying engineering. We have enough engineers in the world. Uh, we should all be studying sustainability. My professional acquaintances, my personal network, constantly used to ask me, how sustainable are we? Because what are you thinking as a consumer? This is a bad product, I don't want to buy this. But what's better? Well, we tell you. GreenSwap is the Fitbit of sustainability. It is a service for businesses and consumers to be able to track, reduce and offset the climate impact of all of their food purchases. So we started off as an online grocery app because people not only wanted to buy sustainable but they also didn't want to go to supermarkets, they wanted it delivered home. We're just launching our new version of the app which allows them to scan a product and look at the climate impact of that product. So how do we decide if a product is bad or if it's good? You go through the entire journey of every food product. The impact of processing, the impact of transportation, the impact of packaging, and then we display it as a single number and a single color for the consumer to be able to understand if it's good or bad. We had to find our early customers, you know, people that were passionate about sustainability. The sustainable community of Amsterdam has been instrumental, especially at the beginning when we launched. So we put out a post and immediately in two days we had 25 people volunteer from the community. Het doel van de groep is dus echt om mensen samen te brengen, om te sparren over initiatieven en om in actie te komen. Dus weg van alleen maar praten online, maar wel in actie komen samen, want dan is het leuker. Owen Snyder bijvoorbeeld deelt heel veel over worm hotels. DIY Soap is een initiatief, ook hier in Amsterdam. Iedereen kent iemand in deze groep die met duurzaamheid bezig is. I want to wake up one day and talk to younger generations about how climate change used to be this dangerous, species-threatening issue, which we came together as a human society and, and solved and tackled. I think the important thing is to not beat yourself about being perfect, but to be good enough. Because good enough is way better than doing nothing. If you want to start on your sustainability journey, start by doing one thing. Start by doing one swap today. I am a tech impact investor and co-president of Stanford Angels and Entrepreneurs, which is a Stanford community of 2000 plus entrepreneurial alumni, students, faculty. We've all come together to advance entrepreneurship and innovation to help our community as well as society. I'm also an LP in a couple of funds, Ulu Venture, a VC firm that embraces diverse entrepreneurial teams as a core asset and Illumin Capital, a fund of impact funds focused on tackling bias in the investor ecosystem. In this critical inflection point, our world faces a three-pronged existential crisis. If we don't tackle the COVID pandemic, overlaid on the underlying crisis of climate change and rapidly growing inequality, we as a species and other species may cease to exist. It's a new day in Odisha, in the eastern part of India, and children from rural villages are up early, on foot, on bicycles. They're all coming to take part in a revolutionary new program designed to improve the quality of education for some of India's most remote and forgotten areas. It's called Sikya, 
and it's determined to change the future for these young students and the communities where they live. Schools are not very good here. 50% of grade 5 students cannot read at grade 3 level. 70% of grade 3 students cannot do a simple subtraction. Quality teachers are very hard to find here. Internet is very slow if available. Electricity can be very inconsistent. Most of all, all these kids need to be taught in a local language called Odia, where quality content is very hard to find. For these kids to succeed, we need to find a solution that is clear, that is inexpensive, and expandable. That's what we did at Sikhya. The Sikhya system is a big idea in a small package. First, the team developed the platform, a hardware and software solution that can function without the internet or even continuous electricity. Students simply connect to these battery-powered units using any Wi-Fi-enabled device and learn at their own pace. For the content, the Sikya team created comprehensive math, science, and English e-learning materials, producing thousands of video lectures along with interactive assessments, all in the local language, and all according to the syllabus as mandated by the local school board. With a dedicated team of facilitators helping to ensure the success of the program, whether in orphanages or underserved communities, new Sikya learning centers are opening up all across Odisha changing more and more young lives in the process. It's a new day in rural India and on some of the darkest streets for some of the most vulnerable children. The light of hope has started to shine. Question by question, one child at a time, the future is looking brighter and brighter. We hope you'll join us. Oh, I, I was the president of uh, uh, ICC. I was a board member, then a president, got very closely uh, to work with Anu, BV, and several other uh, prominent uh, Silicon Valley philanthropists. Um, and then I started working with uh, Pratham. Uh, I continued to serve on their board, and I was the Bay Area president. What I noticed is that, you know, nonprofits, you know, require, you know, lots of money every time you know you need to do three things when it comes to nonprofits, which is true every for um, other uh, businesses also uh, i i say it um, you know fundraising awareness and engagement in no particular order right so today is a great opportunity for the startups presenting here to increase their awareness um and 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 then build on it so what i realized during that process is that for the nonprofits one way to do uh, impact is to support nonprofits which all of us should do but we should also uh, then i changed my thought and saying that hey we need to look at providing mentor capital to impact investments and that's how um, kumar ganapati and i brainstormed together and we created the uh, india impact investment partnership which we call it 3i partners and, uh, you know, it's been a wonderful uh, journey over the last uh, 18 months since we started this. So we've been looking at a lot of, uh, uh, you know, India-based uh, invest, you know, impact-oriented startups, or we call it for-profit social enterprises. And these are companies, I mean, there are 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, but we picked four of them, healthcare, educational technology, um, cultural technology, and livelihood.
I myself spent about 28 years in the corporate sector. So the objective of getting into the social entrepreneurship space is uh, basically we, we really believe in how we can bring the same rigor and the financial discipline of the corporate world into the development sector. Because something that we feel very passionately about is that even development need not just be donation or philanthropy or grant, but it can be run almost on the lines of a business because it's only when you run development on the lines of a business that you can make it both sustainable as well as uh, scalable. So that, that's, uh, you know, in essence, something that we try to do through uh, Mrida. Uh, in a nutshell, Mrida is all about creating rural entrepreneurs and uh, not only uh, just creating entrepreneurs, but actually following the holistic approach to rural development. So whether it's working with women, whether working with small and marginal farmers, working with youth, uh, the whole idea is to take them through this entire gamut of skill development, sustainable livelihoods, uh, you know, entrepreneurship and market linkages, because again, we feel that only when you are able to complete the loop, uh, you know, can you create a sustainable and a scalable uh, business model. Globally, 600 million people suffer from acute, chronic and traumatic wound. One in four diabetics develop ulceration in the foot and 70% of these wounds do not get healed because of an infection. This guy is a treated leprosy patient. He developed this very hypertrophic ulcer which is not healing despite multiple courses of antibiotics. We have developed a novel optical biopsy solution. Illuminate is a rapid point of care handheld device that can detect these invisible bacteria and make them more visible. Before this device, we would actually have to take a biopsy. It might take as long as seven days to help grow the slow-growing bacteria. This takes a minute. The device leverages the autofluorescence property that is inherently present in these pathogens. By combining multispectral imaging with autofluorescence and also applying artificial intelligence on these spectral images, we are able to detect and also classify these bacteria. We believe our device can detect infections early on and significantly bring down the amputation rate. We believe that every youth uh, must be a transformed youth full of Atma Vishwas. Uh, to every such transformed youth must go on to become an entrepreneur or a job creator because that's the single largest challenge that we face as a country and probably in the world. Uh, and third, that how do you leverage every such youth entrepreneur to be a social change maker who can solve problems locally uh, and create communities uh, built on trust and resilience. And across all the initiatives, that's my overarching theme. I believe in a world uh, which is full of abundance and oneness, uh, empowered completely by youth uh, who are full of confidence uh, and who can unleash their unlimited potential. Uh, that's what is my purpose and drives me. Hi, my name is Varun Raheja and I'm the director of Raheja Solar Food Producing. So Raheja Solar Food Producing basically is a social enterprise started for the welfare of farmers by reducing their poor survey losses. So we started with a mission to how can we create a value-added product at the farm level itself. So we do so by manufacturing the most affordable dryer Okay, which is like DIY and foldable, which can be installed in the remotest place of India. Okay, so till now we have installed like uh, uh, solar dry, more than 500 solar drives, almost 26 Indian states, and we are we are processing almost all types of fruits, vegetables, herbs, and uh, flowers with farmers. On how can we create, and we are developing value added product with them at the farm level itself. So that was the journey how we started. So we started like four years back with the mission to help farmers making independent and reducing the, the food wastage. So I started with a mission and a passion of myself, actually. Uh, but how can we uh, create value-added product and for, out of any waste? So I don't like waste and I always wanted to create something uh, 
uh, valuable out of the out of any product which otherwise may go landfill and farming is was always my soft spot so i wanted to work for the for the welfare farmer and that's how we end up uh, by de developing a dryer and we have been recognized by united nation for developing this 200 dollar dryer and how can uh, it revolutionize the agriculture industry if we are able to create micro food processing units at the farm level so at the source itself when the market is not good farmer can dehyde their product and we they dehyde without losing the natural color taste everything get intact in the solo dryer in the batch part we don't have to like add any sugar or preservative to preserve those type of product so uh, talking about the team uh, we have six people in the management team who handle the the production sales part and uh, and the, on the ground scale we have 15 people who are on, in the production of the solo dryer and a few solo dry products that we have in our solo uh, solo drying plant and uh, when we talk about the founder we are two founders me uh, and my mother is the founder uh, we are both are the director of this private limited company uh, where i handle the business development and the solar dryer part and she handle the processing and the the quality check and the storage of the dried products so that we are able to uh, store the product for more than a year and what are the verticals where we can sell uh, this type of product so we identify fmcg companies okay so along with that providing the dryer we also provide farmers the training according to the market requirement what are the products which which they require in the dried form and uh, what is the market where we can sell those uh, dried products so we have our two retail brand which one for the one is barefoot which we uh, which we cater for the mainland india which which has a product of mainland india and the second one is the eastern himalayas which we have developed uh, with the support of uh, east uh, government of arunachal and the a project that we are uh, running over so this this those eastern himalayas product are uh, specifically for the for the northeast product which are coming from the virgin lands of northeast uh, the why default organic product that we can easily call them uh, the fourth question the scalability potential Uh, when we talk about the scale, what you have seen the global demand in the dried products, and it's more than like seventy three billion, which include the dried fruits, vegetables, herbs, and spices, which which uh, accounts for like the the seventy three billion dollar demand. And when we talk about India, which has a huge potential, the fertile land in, in the country, we are able to uh, like process the best produce over here. And what we are addressing with our affordable and DIY drive, we are addressing the 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 most exploited people in the agriculture value chain which are the small marginal farmers so we are working for them by providing them the most affordable dryer we are working with government projects social enterprise the social uh, entrepreneurs and organization like dharma life seva trust nabard jivika the uh, rural livelihood mission and the government organization to uh, to help those small marginal farmers create value added product in the farm level itself we also provide them the financing of the dryer so the potential is seen the 85% constitute of like around 1 crore farmers in india who are who are small and marginal and the demand that we can see uh, globally of the dried products and in india has the potential to to cater those demand um, by having the production side, pro, the very good production here and we can see around one third of the product total production is going waste and only the 10% is getting processed when we talk about china and brazil it's more than 60% so we we can explore those potential that we, how can we increase the the processing cycle by like setting up micro processing units at the farm level the revenue model that we have uh, talk about uh, like we are selling solar dryers uh, as our first product so we are getting around 40% mar 40 to 50% margin in the sale of the solar dry product and apart from the same uh, other thing this the is the solar dry products so we are selling them in the b2b and b2c market uh we are we have onboarded like 25 online platform to sell our products uh, in the retail side and we are also uh, creating distribution channel for dehydrated product also we are trying to create a distribution channel for our uh, for our solar dryer so through that we are going to uh, the aware and promote our solar dryer so the last question by big players can't uh, build this is because uh, they majorly go for the centralized unit and what we have expertise in is the with a is the decentralized model and because of the folding design and diy design we are able to reach the best places of india like the you know product range if we talk about pineapple so it is coming from the best uh, quality pineapple which is victoria pin pineapple of manipur so we are processing directly in manipur 
our oranges is coming from wakro or gi tech that's in arunachal pradesh we have spices coming from arunachal pradesh itself we have grapes from nasik we have uh, we are we have we are we are processing our rose petals and rose buds in rajasthan and other flowers in uttar pradesh so we actually go for the best places in india and according to that we uh, create our product range from the best places so that's how we are able to uh, create create a brand story where we are helping the farmers and our sources are the best thing that we because we analyze all the product quality all across india and where the the condition the idea for the product we go for the production side So that's all all about RSFP and what the work that we are doing. Thank you. Tell us a bit more. Uh, tell us a bit more about your business model. You touched on it. How do you plan to scale on that front on revenue generation? And then tell us a bit about the barriers you face uh, when you go from one language to the other. There is so many rich languages in India. Uh, what are the barriers and how do you um do that as well as what are, what is the cost uh, how much does it cost you to um get ready with another language yeah so basically uh, the the problem with the language is that uh, so, so first of all we can't have a complete tech solution so if you think that google robots or this thing is going to go on and change the world in my village that's completely wrong there is no sikha without sikha so is and then and then in a country of 1.2 billion people okay if you do not find these teachers if you do not capacity building then i think we are doing something something fundamentally wrong but i have already shown that with my you know you know very low end facilitator if you give them a playbook in a tablet like this is you have to do this one two and three and four then you will achieve the outcome and we have already proven in odisha number one number two and number six are our student from last year examination and this can be possible so first of all it cannot be a complete tech solution it will have tech and people okay and the second thing is that from one language we have already proven that in odia we can do it actually because this thing started in 2013 with khan academy i was volunteering there but the problem with khan academy is that they want to put there was something built by khan to there they didn't consider that american democracy didn't work in afghanistan similarly if you just put the american khan academy put in my village it will never work and we have we have done that and we are giving them you know here you give pizza in odisha we have called pitha pitha is a kind of a pizza we give them pitha and by the time the pitha is finished they will just go get out get out okay the moment we start removing lebron james removing thames river we put mahendra singh dhoni we put mahanadi river then the engagement started to find and that is what i am saying the contextualization okay we can take the best practices of the west we can adapt that thing to the east and get that thing proven and that is what we did in odisha that is our model to change that one for example we are working right, right now in karnataka with iit dharwad we want to translate couple of our early grade from 1 to 5 to karnataka so couple of things the animations they will change instead of showing an uh, you know uh, you know in a hero in odisha i may also rajnikanth version of that thing in in, in tamil nadu or i can say that is the idea you know you need to get what the test is even in odisha what we seen odisha have a lot of tribal languages so something that in coastal odisha is not doesn't work in the tribal odisha so therefore it has to be super localized otherwise you can say that you can put all your money and all this thing but it will never work and we have already seen that one from our experience so to translate one language one more language it might be taking about something 6 to 8 months because we have uh, the experience to do that and also the scripts and everything will be translated and we will find people to get that thing done and we are already experimenting that one with karnataka and if that works uh, you know it, it can be done so uh, you have another question I, I, if i uh, forgot uh, to answer uh, yes sir uh, yes this was it and to all our contestant if you can make it keep it please keep it to one to one and half minute max we'll really appreciate it although we are very interested to know details of it so please try uh, and now we welcome uh, ajk sir to please present his question thank you yeah this was it you know um, i mean i i can clearly see some of the models that are adopting is similar to the pratham right uh, so um, you know so my question to you is that are you linearly scaling or is there a way uh, as we call in the valley uh, hockey stick scaling right how are you increasing the um, the the student 
what do you call in getting engaged in your platform and you know, how are you going to do it in a disproportionate manner yeah unfortunately right now we to be told, truth to be told we are linearly scaling it's not like you know there's no hockey stick scalability right now uh, we, we do not know and that's what i want to learn from the esteem you know uh, people here like you know if we can get something to be done that thing you know a hockey stick scalable that would be great but but we are not doing uh, we're doing right now we are just very linear scalability one language one state but what i want to do now is do it proper do it properly in odisha and then then think about uh, you know um, hockey stick scalability yeah yeah please do reach out to me because we have some ideas that you know uh, and i'd i'd like to try that because i everybody's trying to solve this problem in you know in a different way but if we can join hands together then there could be a possibility to solve it differently but uh, i would love to talk to you i know in the interest of time so that's one question that i had the other question that i have is what about your team are you doing it as a one man army or do you have a big team i know you talked about somebody to me for any uh, you know venture to succeed you need to have a good idea that you have which is a needed problem to solve the next important thing is a team can you talk a little bit about your team uh, yes sir so basically i started this thing in my village one army 2014 today we have 26 people and except expect me all of them are working full time and what i do is that it today the money that we make is not going to pay my mortgage and my you know i have two kids and my family run in the california silicon valley right so, so therefore what i do i i do two job the first job as a silicon valley missionary in the day time and as the evening i do an indian missionary and doing this thing meaningful work until night night like sometime 2 o'clock sometime 3 o'clock sometime i don't know whatever the time but we have 25 people on the ground and that includes couple of iitians and i am who are working full time in odisha today today actually mm. we have started to work with the odisha government because at the part of the different type of initiative they love this project because because you know and and, and i was talking about the competitors so like for example byjus the one of the india's top uh, you know valued valued company they are focusing on united states for making money but nobody cares about the vernacular india the 230 million students want to learn nobody cares about that market 2014 when i started in odisha absolutely nothing but what i'm saying is sir they may be the shark in the ocean but i am the crocodile in my mahanadi river and if they come to odisha we can we, we can job. do this thing because we are already done and we already worked a lot of pratham and this is what you know what i'm talking about i am very uh, you know first, you know inspired by the prathams ideas and then that is the kind of the your prathamas used to used to have this kind of community center right so that is what the community centers are running and then finally we are in the schools you know we are in the orphanages we are in in, in many places in odisha but we love to uh, that's what i want to you know i got okay. a chance you know to talk to you guys and then hopefully like we can talk offline with you but i think you might want to tell how does one know when to clean that's one question right because depending on the impurities in the water that can change uh, a lot right that's uh, a very normally, simple question uh, you can yeah in indian condition uh, it will take 1 to 3 hours sir, maximum to filter all the 15 liters down the vessel there is some slow down on the process you know the vessel has to be clean so just to take a cycle pump put it on the reverse of the uh, spout just to pump it and the, the nano pores are clean that's it our good habit is daily clean it in the night before you sleep just for, uh, rinse it with a flush gun and then uh, or a faucet and just uh, leave it so night nobody is going to drink water the next day you love full pot of water which is good enough for a family and uh, my own family i am using it for the past 12 years we started as a small proprietary company but son happened later so i myself enjoyed it and then i started giving to my people and, uh, and the other big difference is the essential mineral and salts which are needed for the body is uh, retained in these filters which are the, that's a big danger in uh, drinking or water and many people have told me personally that after drinking this chandra we have not gone to doctors and touch wood that's happening okay so that's one question anu the second question i'll ask anu and then afterwards you can follow through the, the you had said that you needed to raise money right so do you have uh, is this for um, is this a you know immediate need for you or what is your uh, timing for you can have it, uh, in in phases also sir because if i have one representative in every state it makes my job easy today even though we are giving pan india 
the transportation cost and all those things i want to cut down so i want to build us and i will select people who are passionate about water not mbas or anything like that and in fact recently i got a girl from uh, uh, krishna river she is a girl so both the parents lost their job on uh, the they are daily wages workers and she is uh, having very good communication skill she just wrote me a mail seeing my thing in linkedin sir can you give me a job why desperately i'll do whatever you say i said i said don't do anything just stay back in your place you don't need to migrate to hyderabad or chennai be in krishna where your poor people are there you can just transform them into drinking safe water you be in your own place be with your parents and do that and she is so elated and happy and that's what we do uh, we have a lot of people like this who are freelancers rural entrepreneurs who take small like a photographer in tirutrai pundi just 20 30 pieces he buys for his convenience like uh, the margin we give it to them happily and even big ngos they take it happily because the trader uh, nexus is cut so the money comes down it is hardly 20 us dollars and it can go on and on just imagine the cost of uh, the water they are drinking so that's the thing thank so you so you want to have uh, typically one uh, re- regional representative in every state in fact african countries you have been accredited by rwandan government and other thing there are also we need to have some people on the right place so that we can expand uh, exponentially Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I okay. would like to invite Anuji to uh, present her question now, please. And I request all the panelists and panelists because we are running short of time. So let's make it concise and to the point. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, th- thank you, Chandra Ji. My question to you is: uh, You talked about representatives in different districts to scale your sales, but what about manufacturing? Can you tell me? Is it done yeah. it in one location? Do you plan to have multiple location? And um, how many people are engaged in manufacturing do you employed in manufacturing and how many in um, in sales yeah we have 40 odd people in uh, manufacturing and assembly shop we can easily do around uh, 40 to 50000 pieces uh, in from my chennai unit and the good thing is because i am alumni of cipet the government institution there are 40 institutes across the country we have signed an agreement with them wherever we want to scale up we can uh, get the bodies molded locally from the government institute so it is safe that they will use food grade plastics we already tied up with uh, because of the pandemic and also the floods came together we are already running it in raipur in bhuneshwar in lucknow in amdabad the bodies next in uh, assam we have another cipet unit because cipet is well spread across the country in 40 places so that should not be a problem and we will have any pottery whoever has pottery is a clay available in that state we can put the unit within flat one month i can create a company there just with 15 lakhs of indian rupees to be invested there and they can put up a plant if need be but my plan per month can easily make uh, uh, around 1 lakh uh, sets worth candles that's the capacity i have we are under capacitated because you know the nexus of traders are the branding and all those stuff we don't have that so i wish i do that so what's your number one challenge today what what keeps you up at night simple uh, to engage the government because if the government can become the mover and shaker it is possible but the government contracts are all uh, tailor made by the mnc's why should they describe the water filter or the technology they can simply it should meet the standard is 10500 that's it i give it a 20 dollar or 200 dollar let the cost be efficient they say this is the standard i could not do that even though jal sakti ministry or everybody knows me <laughs> that is one thing which is a real challenge we really want to take to the masses the government has to listen to people like us it's not happening the conventional ros are planted everywhere within 3 months it becomes kaput nobody is able to change it and people drink that bubble top water without knowing what they are drinking that's the sad part i am not a mover and changer in the government side if there is somebody there who can knock the door or uh, build a cat that would be good <laughs> climate labels tell you this product has so much carbon footprint out of such a budget and that budget corresponds with the paris climate agreement uh, the global carbon budget so it's actually a, it's a b2b service that's just wanted to make that clear awesome so welcoming radhika and anu who will be asking questions to ajay about green swap anything that we would like to know more about the project welcome anu welcome radhika thank thank you archana so ajay it's a great concept it's incredible so wanted to understand how do you score these products like you know what what technology or how do you score it so that it it is a standard that we can you know uh, embrace yeah 
So it's not a score actually because score involves value judgment. It involves what I think is important. It's actually a science-based methodology called life cycle analysis. It is an ISO certified standard. We follow the exact same thing, which essentially means that for every single product, we go all the way, we find out who the farmer is, how much energy they use on the farm for irrigation, for harvesting, how much they use for processing, how much they use for transportation, how much they use for packaging. This entire life cycle of every single food product is uh, then converted to carbon footprint. The energy is uh, estimated and converted to carbon footprint. And we have an algorithm that does that. That's the actual core value proposition of our company. This algorithm and the database that it generates, which is able to instantly quantify, let's say, um, 100,000 products that maybe Whole Foods tomorrow came and told us, oh, yeah, we'd like to do this. Here's a million of our SKUs. Our algorithm will, will be able to go estimate the impact of every single product instantly. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. I was just saying, uh, just to summarize, it's it's an ISO certified uh, process called life cycle analysis. It's basically environmental accounting along the life cycle of the product. Uh, uh, so, is it, so, sorry, sorry, Radhika, is it just the, the um, so do you also take into account like the energy or is it also the water consumption and um, and this the... is this is just carbon footprint, which is just entirely related to climate change. So a measure of climate change is carbon footprint and carbon footprint is entirely because of fossil energy used along the entire supply chain during the production of every single product. Usage of water doesn't directly contribute to climate change. It contributes in other ways, but it's the energy that is used that is that then releases carbon dioxide and methane and other greenhouse gas emissions. That is what causes climate change. So it's purely that. Thank you. Radhika ji, please go ahead, Radhika. Yeah, I am very inspiring, Ajay, um, to learn about this holistic and comprehensive solution to shift uh, retail and manufacturer behavior and eventually empower the consumer and businesses with um, sustainable choice information. My question is along Anu's lines. I like to dig a bit deeper there. Um, water and other, other usages also, as you mentioned, indirectly do impact the carbon footprint. Um, are you thinking in the future of also looking at the externalities that are tangentially, if not directly impacting? Um, and uh, what is your confidence level in your SQ, SQU scores and uh, the alternate recommendations you make right now? This is a very complex problem that you're solving. So um, where, yeah. how, how confident are you? And uh, in there, um, are you, you mentioned that you're getting the information from the farmer on the user. Does the farmer input this? How does the algorithm get the data you talked about from the farmers? Okay, I'm gonna answer the second question first. Uh, we are pretty confident. We actually did these tests before we actually put it out. Mm -hmm. um, we developed an algorithm and we tested it and we compared it with certain products which have been fully analyzed. We do an estimate, right? We estimate how much the farmer could have taken to make, for example, a bag of Doritos chips, right? We will estimate what it took in the farm, how much energy it took to make the packaging, transportation, et cetera. But there are, there are a few products in the world which have actually been analyzed by scientists, by research institutes, we compared it and we found about a 90% accuracy, which is, you know, given the fact that we didn't actually go to the farm, we didn't actually go to the processing facility, 90% accuracy is very high. And uh, on top of that, I think your question was the algorithm itself, right? The algorithm is, was actually developed in, so in the support, uh, with the support of University of Michigan, which, which I went to. And my professor is also the one who, who led the team that did the carbon footprinting, footprinting analysis of Beyond Meets Beyond Verbo. Mm -hmm. So it's actually vetted by the climate science community as well. Um, so it's actually, it's fairly accurate. And in terms of the data collection, that's the whole, that's the best part about the model is that nobody has to input any data in our system. The thing is, if just based on the SKU, right, the barcode number and the name of the product, we go scour databases around the world where, Brands require their suppliers through supplier code of conduct. They require them. Uh, they require them to put in data in systems. So there are these things called environmental management systems. 
problems where all the supply all of the supply chain is required to put in data already so we just go collect the metadata and attribute information about every single product input it in our model and then that spits out carbon footprint so that's how it works so nobody inputs any data it's all automatic nobody inputs it specifically for us they do it anyway because unilever is asking them to do it pepsico is asking them to do it um i think the next question was how about like water other things right we are we are thinking of the next big thing that the customers ask us everywhere in the world even you know even in emerging economies west everywhere is plastic water of course what is the third thing we we are looking at but climate change um plastic pollution and water are the three biggest concerns just as you rightly mentioned so for consumers and we are definitely going to expand you know following this we, our next expansion is going to be to do uh, to actually generate a framework to create a framework to estimate plastic footprint as well and then to estimate water footprint and then somehow combine it with nutrition because then it becomes a holistic picture right like i'm when i buy food i'm thinking of if i buy this alternative I'm, is my health going to get affected am i is it is it you know am i going to lose some nutrients what about proteins and things like that but so we'll slowly do it but we're starting with carbon footprint because it is we see it as the most urgent issue that the that humanity is facing today the plans to do that and also do you see economies of scale this is a powerful model of distributed drying even locally if you brought together a few farmers so in a village in a region would there be economic economies of scale in your manufacturing and in your unit pricing have you given some thought to that for the future Okay, great. So, Namaste, Radhika ji. Thanks for the question. Actually, uh, what we have seen right now that our uh, the return of investment that we are getting from our system because it's more supportable, and the end product that we are getting from like coming up in the market is a very premium uh, segment like dried tomato. It can be easily sold at like thousand rupees a kg to two thousand rupees a kg, and the unit cost is almost hundred to two hundred rupees. So there is a huge margin that we can get, which we can share even with the farmers and with us to actually grow and help more number of farmers. so that makes our business model uh, very uh, like because the end product is going is like um, a premium one so that's help us and it's actually a growing one like even everywhere right now in the metro city you find that people don't have time so they look for the convenient product just pour the hot water and your gravy is ready your sabji is ready so there's the same thing dry right product is the, the one with maggi you find a vegetable sachet which actually dried one so it's help us to get the return very easily and to reach almost uh, for, like Varieties of products are coming in. Uh, in vegetable, we are targeting the ready-to-eat companies. In fruit sector, we are actually targeting the cereal companies, the fruit flavor breakfast cereals who are actually making granola bars and uh, millets, fruit flavor millets. And the flower sector, we are actually targeting the tea companies because in rose tea, detox teas, there's a huge demand out there, which is like, there's a one of our client is like earning almost 12 crores of revenue every year with just selling dried flowers. There's a huge demand out there, and there's no actually a complete value chain who is controlling the quality and all so we are coming up with the, controlling the quality coming from directly from the farm not coming not adding any middleman we just selling directly to the consumer even we are working on a platform where we can uh, like onboard all the plat all the farmers who are processing and all the companies who are actually buying the product globally that's help us to like connect the model and value chain very easily Awesome. So, Welcome, uh, Arun. Arun Nagpalji, to present the next question. Thank you. Yeah, Arun, Arun uh, very. Uh, I I must say a very interesting and a very impressive uh, presentation. I think what I really liked was the focus on the small and marginal farmers. Uh, you know, including women into your business model. The you know the data that you had, and and this whole idea of providing a holistic uh, solution. So I think that's. Uh, uh two questions uh have you uh, really looked at uh, csr interventions you know tying up with corporates uh, as part of their corporate social responsibility so you might like to uh, you know consider so i don't know if you already considered that uh the other uh, observation was you also mentioned that you are encouraging some of the customers to have their own b2c brands uh i don't know if you really looked at whether it makes sense to have a uh, small and marginal farmers since that's your focus try to build their own b2c brand or you know you uh, would you be better off probably trying to create a platform where you take part uh, you know you you take on the onus of branding etc and just provide the market linkages okay okay so uh, thank you for the question arun ji i will take the second question first 
so we are not actually uh, supporting like directly the farmer to start their own d2c brand we actually collaborate with fpo who have thousand of uh, like farmers associated with them as a member so they have the government fund they actually uh, like they are already uh, getting marketing support from the government so that help us to actually uh, like plan something with a, a management team if you have 1000 farmers but they have 10 um, farmers who handle the management team so we do work we do develop their uh, like train them with a d2c brand on how we they can sell through the online platform through amazon flipkart and all so it's done with those uh, farmers group and fp only not with individual farmer because it's going to be very tedious for us for on the ground scale so we don't go uh, like do it individually with each and every farmer but what why we actually started uh, encouraging farmer to start the d2c brand is because of the margin rate in b2b when we buy back it's almost 10 to 20% margin that we can that they can get but when they can sell their product in local grocery store they can get almost 60% additional margin because it's the retail product so that's why we started farmer to we encouraging farmer to at least start on a, a local grocery like if they are tomato uh, tomato powder they can make adding tomato powder they can add small pinch of salt and black pepper add and make so uh, soup ready to eat soup they can uh, make ready to eat upma they can make uh, ready, like all uh, like they have tomato uh, turmeric with them so they can make turmeric powder and sell them in the local grocery store they can have methi and they can convert into kasuri methi and can sell easily sell in the grocery store it can be sold at 600 rupees so there are the common product which can be easily sold in the local market that's what we are promoting it and for the okay. first question csr is always yeah. the opportunity for us we always want because it's not a easy job to like uh, get a fund for this thing like it was roi is coming from 9 month and we are bootstrap we don't have any foreign investor who like who like keeps us filling the fund that we need so it's very critical for us to make it the project sustainable so csr is going to be very crucial for us we are approaching a lot of agencies but it's really difficult uh, that more and more promotion uh, from this like car charge impact and even from uh, other programs that we are getting even biofac right now delhi is organizing a program so from those enterprise those actually initiative we are actually getting the promotion and helping us to like to connect with those csr funds so it's going it's going to take time we have the patience It's going to take time. We have the business model which can actually suit their money the best because we are getting actually the solution, directly the complete solution. We can they can see if they're investing something right now in nine months they can see something in the market, in the local market itself. So if we get any opportunity, your connects can help us. It's going to be very crucial. Thank you. Sure, so we'll we'll connect offline, but I I think you could look at CSR interventions because you know for the kind of work that you are in, I think that becomes good seed capital to promote the kind of entrepreneurship ventures that you. Thank you. The second prize really you know close to my heart the subject uh, post harvest technology, uh, that is second place Raheja Solar. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I I think the first prize. Uh, Uh, first place is going to Watson. Congratulations, Chandra! So these are the two, and then it's great to see such a competition, and then amazing presentations. I really enjoyed. Uh... Everyone, I'm Program Kuchipatla, CEO and founder of Spoho. We are a social engagement-based digital platform for 500 million plus users, where content, social interaction, personalization, and customization uh, converge to improve the socio-economic conditions and livelihood of artisans. Has this ever happened to you? Every time we go out for shopping, I vividly remember my mom, my wife, and my sister looking at different combinations of color, fabric, and design for the ethnic apparel, which the stores generally do not carry. And as a result, we used to spend hours going from store to store. I'm sure you must have at least faced this once in your lifetime. It is this lack of choices quality price transparency lack of social validation and lack of customization and personalization that has made customers unsatisfied which has become the norm on the other end is india's and in fact the world's oldest industry the handloom and handicraft is on the verge of extinct due to highly fragmented market poor infrastructure obsolete technology and a huge disconnect between the current generation and the artisan community our solution is to bridge both the gaps to technology introducing espoho